Hello again. This is Math 2232 coming to you from the College of DuPage. The title of this lecture is Estimating the Value of a Convergent Series. As always, please be an attentive learner while watching this video. By way of introduction, we spent a lot of time uh, in these lectures talking about the convergence of series. However, with the exception of geometric and telescoping series, we've not talked about finding the actual value of a series. Now, this is usually a very difficult thing to do, and we uh, still aren't going to talk about how to find the value of a series in general. Uh, what we will talk about, however, is how to estimate the value of a series. And often that's all you need to know. You see an engineer has a tolerance and only needs an answer accurate to a certain point. And this lecture will help you do that. Before we get into how to estimate the value of a series, let's remind ourselves how series convergence works. It doesn't make any sense to talk about the value of a series that doesn't converge. And so we will be assuming at the outset that all the series we talk about here will converge. Also, we will see uh, the mean method of estimating the value of series that will come out of this discussion, and these can be applied to even more general situations. So let's start with the series summation n equal 1 to infinity. Again, the starting point is not important, but we do need a starting point, so this is what we're going to start with. And now we're going to assume that the series converges to S. Now that means that uh, S of n, the limit of the partial sums going up to n, will form a convergent sequence, and its limit is um, S. So the limit as n goes to infinity of S sub n is equal to S. Okay, well, that means if you take n large enough, S of n will approximately equal to S. So that's one method of estimating the value of series where we just take a partial sum, and that's our estimation. But two questions still loom large. How good is the estimate? And if we don't have an idea of how good the estimate is, it really doesn't do much good for us to have that as an estimate. And secondly, is there a way to make the estimate bigger uh, and often, uh, excuse me, better? And often what will happen is uh, this will happen by making n larger, but how, you, how big do you have to make n? Sometimes we can use this estimate as a starting point and make the estimation bigger, and we won't always be able to do this, but we'll talk about situations where we can. All right, so uh, let's start with a general discussion about determining how good an estimation is. So we're going to write the infinite sum, breaking out or stripping out the first n terms. Then we're going from i equals n plus 1 to infinity of a sub i. Notice that the first series, the stripped out ones, uh, is nothing more than a partial sum s sub n, and it certainly uh, converges. The second series on the right, the one starting at i equal uh, n plus 1 is called the remainder, and we're going to denote that by r sub n, and that means you strip out the first n terms and you do the rest of them, and that is going to be r sub n. So this part is r sub n. And finally, let's acknowledge that we also know the value of the series since we're assuming it's convergent. Now this is just a theoretical thing. We say, okay, suppose it converges to s. Then s is equal to s sub n, the first n terms, plus the remainder going from n plus 1 onward. Now we can solve this for the remainder and we will get r sub n is equal to s minus s sub n. So the remainder tells us the difference or error between the exact value of the series and the value of the partial sum that we're using as an estimation of the value of the series. This is how wrong I could be if I stop at n. Of course, we can't get our hands on the actual value because we don't have the value of the series. However, we're going to talk about some of the tests that we have, and this enables us to get actually a good estimate on r sub n because of the structure of the series. Once we've got this estimate, then we have a good idea on just how good a job the partial sum does estimating the actual value of the series. Kind of a powerful idea. Now, there are several tests that will allow us to get estimates of the remainder. So we're going to go through uh, examples of each one of these separately. Also, when using the test, many of them had preconditions for use, terms that had to be positive, had to be decreasing, etc. And when using the test, we noted 
All we really needed for them was to eventually meet the preconditions. So for the following work, however, we're going to need the preconditions to always be met for all the terms in this series. If there are a few terms at the start where the preconditions aren't met, we'll need to strip those terms out, estimate the series as left, then add those terms in to get a final estimate of the series value. first test we're going to study is the integral test. Recall that in this case we will need to assume that the series terms are all positive and are decreasing for all n. We derive the integral test by using the fact that the series could be thought of as an estimation of the area under the curve f of x where we carefully chose f of x so that f of n equal a sub n. We can do something similar with the remainder. As we'll soon see, we can get upper and lower bounds on the value of the remainder that we can use these bounds to help us get upper and lower bounds on the actual value of the series. We can then use the upper and lower bounds to actually estimate the value of the series. Okay, so let's recall that what we did with the integral test is we had positive and decreasing function f of x and that the actual uh, tail of this uh, series, uh, r sub n, uh, we could draw something that had the, um, the height that was uh, a sub n plus 1, and we get this, this, and this, and you can see that, as you saw before, the green areas are larger than uh, the function itself. And so, and those are r sub n, which is the actual value of the tail of the series, r sub n. So this area is r sub n, and so what we can see is, in this case, r sub n is bigger than or equal to the integral from n plus 1 because the rectangles add up to a bigger area than the other. So we have r sub n is bigger than or equal to the uh, improper integral from n plus 1 to infinity of f of x dx. And similarly, we could estimate starting at x sub n and using the left endpoints. Now we're going to get an underestimate of the value of this, uh, of this integral. And, um, and, and in fact, this is going to be the, um, the sum from uh, n, and we're comparing it against this. So this is what we have in the sketch, and this is the inequality that leads. Notice that the green area is less than the area under the curve. So this time we have r sub n is less or equal to uh, the integral from n to infinity of f of x dx. So if we combine the two, we see that r sub n is caught in between this integral and this integral. So if we can do these integrals, we can come up with numbers, and we have an upper and lower bound on how good the estimate is. What is the remainder if we stop at n terms? And so uh, you see that's what we're doing here. So s was equal to s sub n plus r sub n. Uh, but using this in these two inequalities, we can conclude that s plus uh, r sub n is um, less than or equal to s plus the integral from uh, n to infinity r sub n and s is greater than or equal to s plus this integral. So we get upper and lower bounds. Putting these two things together, we see this is the statement. So s plus this is less than or equal to s sub n plus this is less than or equal to this. And that is less than or equal to s sub n plus this integral. So we have an upper and lower bound on the value of the series. And if we were to subtract s sub n, we could say that s minus s sub n is less than or equal to this number. And it's greater than or equal to that number. Let's work an example on this. So let's say we sum this term from n equal 1 to up to 15. And we stop there. What is the value of that, and how much could we be wrong? You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Well, in this case, uh, and we will prove this later in the course, we haven't proved it yet, 
uh, but the uh, sum of this actually is pi squared over 6. Let's go to n equal 15, so we add up these. Now you have to use a calculator to add something like this up, but we end up with this is 1.58 and change. And so you see that's what we get for the sum up to 15. So that's our estimate if we stop at 15. But now we're going to estimate the uh, remainder. So we're computing those integrals. So we go from 15, this uh, improper integral of 1 over x squared dx, and we get 1 over 15. And then if we go from 16 to infinity, we get 1 over 16. So that says that s is in between these two numbers. And since this is the exact value of that integral, uh, and again, we will discuss how to get uh, this one, but you see that, wow, this is a wonderful uh, estimate. And this uh, is, uh, is very close. And for most engineering purposes, these are the same numbers going down to, uh, well, the hundredths place and, or thousandths place. And so, um, you know, that's, that's a pretty good estimate. And that's often good enough for an engineer to use. We now turn our attention to the comparison test. In this case, unlike the integral test, we may or may not be able to get an idea of how good the particular partial sum will be as an estimate of the exact um, value of the series. Much of this will depend on how the comparison test is used. But let's wait in and see what we can do. First, let's remind ourselves on how the comparison test actually works. Given a series, the summation a sub n, let's assume that we've used the comparison test to show that it's convergent. Therefore, that means we have found a second series, b sub n, so that the summation of b sub n converges and uh, a sub n is less than b sub n for all n. And recall that one of the preconditions is that a sub n and b sub n are positive for all n. So what we want to do is determine how good of a job the partial sum s sub n equal the summation from i equal 1 to n of a sub i will do in estimating the value of the actual series. So let's write down what those are. So the r sub n for the summation from i equal n plus 1 to infinity of a sub i. And we're going to let t sub n be the uh, summation from uh, i equal n plus 1 to infinity of b sub i. Now we know that this number, r sub n, is less than this number because we knew that a sub i was less than this, and they're all positive. When using the comparison test, it's often the case that the b sub n are fairly nice, and we might be able to actually get an idea on the size of t sub n. And if that's the case, that's what we're going to use. For instance, if our second series is a p series, we can use the results from above to get an upper bound on t sub n as follows. Uh, so r sub n is less than or equal to t sub n, but we know that this can be estimated by the integral test. And so this is less than or equal to the integral from n to infinity of g of x dx, where g of n is equal to b sub n. Also, if the second term is second series, rather the second series, this one, is a geometric series, we can use the comparison test to help with estimates. Um, if we can't get an idea of t sub n, we are uh, not in uh, very good shape because there's nothing we really can do. But let's take a look at an example where that is the case, where we can get an estimate on the t sub n. All right, and again, I'm not going to uh, do a count down here for you, but these are good problems for you to practice on now and in the future. Use n equal 15 to estimate the value of, this is the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of 2 to the n over 4 to the n plus 1. Okay, so to do this, we need to go through the comparison test and get a second series. And here's our idea about the second series. You see, if we make the denominator smaller, going from 4n plus 1 to 4n, we've made a useful step. And this would be 1 half to the n. So you see, these terms are dominated by terms of a geometric series. And we know that this geometric series 
is a geometric series, it converges because the absolute value of r is equal to 1 half, which is less than 1. So now we've got our second series, and we know it converges, and in fact, we know how to calculate that. So uh, S of 15 is equal to this summation. And um, uh, again, you just use a calculator or, a, or Excel even better to calculate what this is. And so how good is that estimate? Well, R sub 15, which is the remainder when we stop there, is less than or equal T15, which is the sum from N equal 16 to infinity. And we can compute what that one is um, using formulas from the geometric series. And so we find that that's the same thing as uh, the summation from n equals 16 to infinity of 1 half to the n is the same as the summation from 0 to infinity of 1 half to the n minus we subtract off n equals 0 to 15, 1 over 2 to the n. Both of these are, this is a finite geometric series. This is an infinite one. So we can calculate this. And so we know that uh, this tail of this series, um, when I uh, add it up, is uh, equal to, in fact, this number. So that means that S, which is what we have, is approximately this number plus the remainder. And we get this value. That's not a bad estimate. And it will be only off by no um, more than this amount. That's a pretty good estimate. That is tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, three hundred thousands. Before moving on to the final part of this lecture, let's note that we will only be able to determine how good an estimate is using the comparison test if we can get our hands on the remainder of the second um, series or the second term that we're having, the B sub ends. Uh, the reality is we won't always be able to do this, but when we can, it's very nice. Now we turn our attention to the alternating series test. This is the next to last one we'll talk about. Uh, because the method we've looked at so far have required the series to contain only positive terms, if we allow the series to have negative terms in the process, it's much more difficult. However, there is one case where this isn't too bad because there's a definite pattern with the alternating series test. Every other term is negative. Once again, we start off with a convergent series. Now that means that it does converge, and so the summation a sub n is equal to, and without loss of generality, we're going to say it's the summation of minus 1 to the n b sub n. And so this is an alternating series, and we're going to assume that this alternating series satisfies the condition of the alternating series test. There are anomalies where it um, can converge without satisfying that, but we're going to assume that it does, and we can check those. So we know that bn is greater than or equal to 0 under our assumption and is decreasing for all n. Those were the preconditions. Also note that we uh, could have any power on the minus 1. We just use n for the sake of convenience. We want to know how good of an estimation is the actual series will be if we stop with the partial sum s sub n. As noted in the prior case, we know that the remainder will be the error in the estimation. And so if we can get a handle on it, we'll know approximately how good our estimation is if we stop with n terms. Now, from the proof of the alternating series test that we did in our lectures, we can see that s will lie between s sub n and s sub n plus 1 for any n. So the absolute value of this s minus s sub n is less than or equal to the distance between those two. And then we will going to call that, and, what, and the difference between those two is just going to be, the absolute value of that is going to be b sub n plus 1. So you see the error is going to be less than or equal to the absolute value of the next term in the sequence, the first term that you didn't include in your estimate. So the absolute value of r sub n is less than or equal to b sub n plus 1. And we needed absolute values because we don't know ahead of time if the estimate will be larger or smaller because this could be positive or negative. But we do know that the b sub n's are all positive. Here's an example. 
using n equal 15, estimate the value of this uh, alternating series, the summation from n equal 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n all over n squared. And you know what to do. This is a good example for you to do now. And it's also a good example for you to study later in the course. <clears throat> Now we do know this is an alternating series and we could apply the alternating series test to realize that it does converge. Now in this case, and this is another thing we're going to be proving later in the course, <coughs> that the exact value of this alternating series is known and is actually equal to minus pi squared over 12. But our estimate, if we go up to 15, is this. And again, you use a calculator to do the first 15, you get this. And you can see, oh, it's actually very close. But from the uh, fact that we know that the absolute value of the remainder, the error term, is less than or equal to b um, sub 16. And that is 1 over 16 squared. So it's less than or equal to this. So our estimation, if we stop at 15 terms, will have an error of no more than that. And in fact, the actual error is less than that. And so often it'll be less than or equal to the estimated error, but that gives us an upper bound, which is very useful for engineering purposes. We know how large to let n be. The final example we're going to talk about is what happens if we're doing the ratio test. And as you know, the ratio test is one of the most general tests that we can look at. So this is the uh, final test uh, that we're looking at for estimating a series. Well, and remember that in the ratio test, we computed the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 over a n. And we know this is convergent. And so L is less than 1. And L is the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And um, so what we're going to do, as in the previous case, we're going to use the remainder to determine how good an estimate it is if we stop at the partial sum s sub n. Okay, so to get the estimate, uh, we define the following sequences. So r sub n, and we did this in the proof as well, is equal to a sub n over a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And again, you remember that this starts looking like a geometric series. So there are two possibilities when we compute this. Uh, if it is a decreasing sequence and uh, R sub uh, n plus 1 is less than 1, then uh, R sub n is less than or equal to. And this is going to be um, the, um, the uh, from the geometric series because this is the r sub n. So r sub n is less than uh, or equal to a sub n plus 1 over 1 minus r to the n plus r sub n plus 1. Or if it's an increasing sequence, this is if it's decreasing. If it's increasing, you know it's increasing up to um, uh, this value. And so uh, what happens is that r sub n is less than or equal to a sub n plus 1 over 1 minus l. So we have two possible cases, and you want to think about why there are these two possible cases. Okay, so here is the proof of our estimate. So, bar, uh, so we're going to say, well, what is r sub n? Well, that means we go from n plus 1 to infinity of these terms. Then I'm going to factor out a n plus 1. And once you factor out a n plus 1, you get these values. And those are uh, the ratios that we're going to be looking at. Now we'll do a little bit of work. And what we're doing is we're multiplying by 1 in each time. But sometimes we multiply by 1 twice, and so on and so forth. So uh, look at this. See, we're multiplying by 1. And here we're multiplying by 1 twice and so on. So using the definition of r, then we have r sub n is equal to, this is a sub n. And this then is going to be r n plus 1. But then this is r n plus 1 times r n plus 2, if I reorganize that. 
and this is going to be three factors, and so on and so forth. So now we can say that we assume that it's decreasing. If it's decreasing, we can say r sub n equal to all of those is less than or equal to, and here, um, since it was decreasing, this is less than or equal to uh, 1 plus, this is r n plus 1, that is r, n plus 1 squared, this is r n plus 1 uh, cubed, plus dot dot dot, that is a geometric series. And so this is, so r sub n is less than or equal to this, which is equal to, and this is a n plus 1, and that is the sum of, from um, i equals 0 to infinity, of r uh, n plus 1 whole uh, to the k. So this is a geometric series. And we know then that this is a n plus 1, and this the geometric series is 1 over 1 minus r sub n plus 1. So that means we have an estimate here for r sub n. Now for the second part, if we assume that r sub n is increasing, we know that this limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of uh, r sub n is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n over n, and that's L. So we know that this is less than L because it's increasing to a upper bound. So the remainder can be estimated this way. All of those are less than L. So we get that. So this is a n plus 1. So r sub n is less than a n plus 1. The summation k equals 0 to infinity of LK. This is a geometric series, and we're assuming this converges, so L is less than 1, so this is the estimate. So we get Rn is less than or equal to An plus 1 over 1 minus L. Now, there were several restrictions that we imposed along the way, but one of them is useful uh, in going to yield the formula. If the restrictions aren't meant, you can't use the formula. Let's look at an example of this. Okay, so we're going to be using n equal 15 to estimate the value of, this is the summation n equals 0 to infinity of n over 3 um, to the n. Okay, now first let's verify that this is a convergent series. So we look at L being a n plus 1 divided by a n. Well, that, when we reduce that, we see we get n plus 1 over 3n. The limit as n goes to infinity is 1 third. That is less than 1. And then let's add up the first 15 terms. Now, you have to use a calculator or something to uh, do that. But I'm going to note, for testing purposes, to find out r sub n, you don't have to use a calculator. And it's not a complicated Excel thing. So determine estimate on the remainder then, and hence the error, we're going to look at the sequence r sub n. So r sub n is equal to um, this. It's going to be uh, a sub n divided by uh, a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. It is this, and this is what we get for r sub n. Now, uh, we're going to uh, try to figure out, is this increasing or decreasing? Well, in this case, if we take, uh, we so we write this as a continuous differentiable function, and we can take the derivative of this, and we find out that this, in fact, is decreasing. So since this function is decreasing, and f of n equal r sub n, uh, the sequence is decreasing. And r16 is equal to, we'll sub this, substitute this in, and so we have r sub n is less than or equal to a16 over 1 minus r16. We put in the numbers, and you see how accurate this really is. So this is really quite good. That is going to be tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions. Okay, I think that's ten millions, five, ten millions. So the estimate is quite good. And in this case, it's um, uh, uh, pretty much that, uh, uh, pretty much exactly that good. Okay, uh, and this is actually a little bit better. Now, in the last two examples, we've seen that the upper and lower bound calculation on the error can sometimes be close to the actual error, and other times might be off by a bit. But there's no way of knowing, but again, we're trying to estimate how big n we have to use. Um, note that this method did require 
uh, that the series terms be positive, but that doesn't mean we can't deal with ratio tests that have negative terms. Off a series, we used our alternating series, and there's another way to estimate that. Um, so, note, however, if the series does have negative terms and doesn't happen to be an alternating series, we can't use any of the methods discussed in this section to get an upper bound on the error. It will rely on your own creativity. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. We are all indeed in this together. May God bless you all.